Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you watching the broadcast. We've got some great things to share with you. You know, I have taught on the prayer petition many times on this television broadcast, and it is one of the teachings that people respond to more than anything else that we talk about. Obviously, prayer is important. The prayer petition is the prayer I learned over 40 years ago, over 45 years ago now, seems to be the kind of prayer that produces the quickest results in the most impossible looking situations. I think that's why people respond to this the way they do is because so many people today are facing impossible looking situations. I know there may be some of you in the audience today facing impossible looking situations, but there's hope, praise God. There's always hope because our God is the God in whom nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. So let's get started today. And first of all, I'd like for us to begin in Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18 and verse one. Jesus is speaking a parable to them, and he makes this statement, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Another translation says, and do not grow weary, not lose heart, and not give up. Now, the statement I want us to focus on, first of all, is men ought always to pray. In other words, prayer should be a vital part of our lives. Right. Prayer shouldn't be looked upon as some religious obligation, that it's a vital part of our life. And what we need to also realize is that God expects us to pray. Yeah. Amen? Yes. And it, prayer shouldn't be looked upon as a last resort. Yes. You know, like some guy came to me one time years ago and said, Brother Jerry, I'm faced with this situation. I don't know what to do. I said, well, let's go to the Word of God and find out what it says and pray. He said, has it come to that? You know, like, you know, that's the last resort as far as he was concerned. No, prayer should be the first thing we think. Yes. Yes. Amen. The first thing we think when we're looking at something that is impossible or we're looking at something that we know in the natural, we can't do anything about it. Right. Then the first thought we should have is let's pray. Let's pray. And then notice in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. If you have time to turn there, you can. If not, just listen to the first part of this verse. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest. So notice that didn't say if you pray, but when you pray. So these two statements together tell us that prayer, once again, should be a vital part of the Christian's life a vital part of our walk with God. Men ought always to pray and when you pray. So that's telling us that prayer should be a vital part of our walk with God. No matter what the situation is, no matter how impossible it might seem, no matter what did or didn't happen to other people who told you they prayed, you can't base this on other people's experiences. You've got to pray yourself. Amen. Amen. Thank God for those who have positive, you know, uh, testimonies. We prayed, you know, we faced something impossible and I'm telling you, God came through. Wonderful. I welcome that. But somebody comes along and says, well, we prayed and it didn't work. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to base my faith on what happened to you. Right. Amen. Right. I'm going to base my faith on the word of God. Right. And God says, if I pray, I can't expect results, particularly if I'm praying according to the word of God, which means I'm now praying according to the will of God. Amen. I've had positive results in prayer. I can't think of one time God's ever disappointed me. 45 years of walking with God, and I can't think of one time that he's ever disappointed me. If there's one thing I know for sure, it's this. God is faithful. Yes. How many of you can testify to that? Amen. God is faithful, praise God. Now, prayer still changes things. How many of you believe that? Amen. Prayer changes things. James chapter four and verse two makes this statement. You have not because you ask not. So God expects us to pray. He's the one who set up the system, so to speak. You know, you have not because you ask not. You know, if you are going without, if you have needs in your life that never seem to get met, you know, it should become a revelation to you at some point. I don't have because I haven't asked. You know, I haven't gone to God. Prayer 
to many people is trying to convince God we have a problem down here. Hello, Houston, we have a problem, you know, yeah, you know, but that's not prayer. I mean, God already knows what's going on down here. Amen. You don't get to be called God if you don't know things like this. Amen. <laughs> Uh, the Bible says that everything that has to do with us is open and naked unto him. In other words, he sees all. There's not one thing you will ever go through that will catch God by surprise. You don't go to God and say, God, I've got a financial problem. He says, wow, we didn't know that. We, we thought you needed healing in your body. We didn't know about the finances. No, there's nothing that you and I will ever go through that he's not already aware of. In fact, God knows you so well and knows everything about you that the Bible says he knows your need even before you ask him. But notice he expects you to do what? Ask him. He knows every need that you're faced with. He knows every situation you're going through. So wouldn't you agree with me that spending all of your time trying to convince God we have a problem is a waste of time? Amen. Amen. That's a waste of time. And yet that's the way most Christians look at prayer. If I can just do this long enough or loud enough, you know, if I do it loud, maybe God will, you know, I'll get his attention. I know he's busy, you know, running the universe, but if I pray loud enough, if I cry enough, you know, if I, if I act, you know, pitiful and, and, uh, you know, uh, Dear God, you just don't know how important this is that you listen to me. Maybe he'll hear me. Maybe he'll take time out of his busy day and will listen to me. That's all religious tradition. Amen. And Jesus said, religious tradition makes the word of God of no effect. So trying to convince God that you have a problem is a waste of time. Crying and bawling and squalling, as we'd say here in Texas, you know, I realize you have feelings, I realize you have emotions, and I realize sometimes the pressure is so great that it may cause you to get emotional, but it's not how emotional you get that gets the attention of God. Come on, right. Come on. Amen? Maybe if I can just, you know, really convince him how serious this is, if I cry loud enough or long enough, maybe he'll hear me. No, let me tell you something. The moment you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Heaven stood at attention. Yes. Amen. Yes. Heaven stood at attention and is ready to hear what you have to say. Yes. So the Bible says, once again, men ought always to pray and not faint, meaning don't give up after you pray. If you pray, expect results. Don't give up. And then the Bible says, and when you pray, implying that it's not a matter of if you pray, but you should be praying. And then, of course, James tells us we have not because we ask not. So what all this tells me is this, prayer opens the door to unlimited possibilities. Yeah. Yes. Would you agree to that? Yes. Prayer opens the door to unlimited possibilities. And the beautiful thing about it is the one you're praying to is the God in whom nothing is impossible. Amen. Can you say amen, amen. to that? Amen. Say it with me. The God I serve, the God I serve. Nothing, is nothing is impossible to him. You know, once when God introduced himself to Abram and Sarah and told them they were going to have a child, and we all know how impossible that was according to what the Bible tells us. Sarah's womb was dead. She could not conceive. They're both up in age, so it's impossible. And when God tells them they're going to have a child, the Bible says that Sarah even laughed at the thought of that. Mm -hmm. And God said, to Abraham, why did your wife Sarah laugh? And then he made this statement, is anything too hard for the Lord? Right, right. You got to keep that in the yes. forefront of your thinking. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, actually in the little Hebrew there, it's El Shaddai. Is anything too hard for El Shaddai? And El Shaddai means the God in whom nothing is impossible. Right. So God was asking, is there anything too hard for the God in whom nothing is impossible. You need to think of that. Whatever you're going through, this is not too hard for God. It's hard for men. It may be impossible for men. I mean, the fact that you're going to prayer already proves you can't do anything about it on your own. So you're expecting the God in whom nothing is impossible to respond to your request. Right. Amen? Amen. 
And my Bible says all the promises of God are in him, yea and amen. That means God is affirmative. That means whatever God promises, he fully intends to back it. So it looks like to me, before I go to prayer, I ought to find out what God's word says. Because if I can find out what God says about my situation, then I have this confidence that he will back every promise he's ever made. Can you say amen? Amen. I don't know how you go to prayer, but I go to prayer with expectance. I go to prayer knowing on the inside that this is not a waste of time. I never think, oh, I hope my prayer gets higher than the ceiling. I never think, oh, I hope he hears me this time. Every prayer I pray because I know what the Word says. I've spent 45 years studying this book. I know what the Word says. And I'm basing every prayer I pray on what the Word of God says. That's the reason I'm confident. If it's a financial need, then I have this promise. My God shall supply all my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And if He supplies all my need, that has to include financial needs. So when I go to God in prayer about finances, I go to Him with confidence, with assurance, knowing up front the will of God. My God shall supply my need. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the Psalms, we'll, we'll read many of these as we continue in this study, but in the Psalms, it says that God delights in the prosperity of his servants. Yes. Amen. Amen. God Amen. delights yes. in the prosperity of his servants. The Bible even says that poverty is a curse and thank God we're redeemed from the curse. Yes, so you see, if you know what the word says, then when you go to prayer, when you go to the God in whom nothing is impossible. You have this confidence. You have this assurance. God heard me. Not only did he hear me, but I am confident that he will respond, that my needs shall be supplied. Now here's the problem. There's this time frame that I call between amen and there it is. (laughs) Amen. That's that time frame called amen. I pray and I close my prayer with amen. Now amen doesn't mean the end. It means so be it. Amen. When you say amen, you're saying so be it. So when I pray and I close my prayer with amen, I don't think the end, I think so be it. Now there's this time frame between so be it and there it is. That can be moments, that can be months. (laughs) I've even had it take years. But what God is saying to us is this. What are you going to do between so be it and there it is? Because what you do in that time frame will determine whether or not you ever have a there it is. Right. Yes, Amen. And what yes, did Jesus tell us? Men ought always to pray and not faint. So feigning between amen and there it is is not an option. Right. Not if you want results. Come on. Right. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah. Amen. 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 So feigning, giving up, growing weary, listening to other people, being distracted, you know, allowing the devil to deceive you into thinking nothing's happening. Oh yes, something's happening. The moment you said, amen, something happened in the spirit realm. Now you're waiting for it to manifest in the natural realm. Amen. So once again, there's that time frame between amen or so be it. And there it is. What are you going to do? Are you going to walk in faith? which means not be moved by what you see, not be moved by what you feel, not be moved by what you hear. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to act like a lot of people? Well, you know, I prayed yesterday. I don't see any results. I guess nothing happened. I guess my prayer didn't get any higher than the ceiling. You know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's like, do not pass go, do not collect $200. (laughs) You know, in the old Monopoly games, you know. Uh, you, you just forfeited everything yeah. by making statements like that. You just negated your prayer. Yes, sir. So there are rules to prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't make them up. God did. Right. Yeah. Amen. There are rules to prayer. Yeah. And if you abide by those rules, then you're going to get results. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. You will get the results that God promises you. So once again, Think of prayer as a wonderful opportunity to communicate with the God in whom nothing is impossible. Think about that. It's also your right, 
your ability, your privilege to communicate with the creator of the universe. Just think about that. I mean, you know, you may never get an audience with the president of the United States. You may never get an audience with a man like Billy Graham. You may not ever get an audience with, you know, some person that is highly visible and, 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 and uh, famous. You may, and somebody that you highly respect, you may never get an audience with them. May never sit down for 15 minutes and talk to a person like that. But you do have the right every day of your life throughout the day to speak to the creator of the universe. Yes. And the good thing is he's interested in what you have to say. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You know, uh, I, I, I personally, you know, I, I thought Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan was a great man. I admired him. I have many books on his life and particularly during his presidency that I enjoy reading. I had the privilege of being in his presence four times during his two terms as president. I didn't get to meet him. I didn't get to shake hands with him, but I was as close to him as I am to this audience right here. And just being in his presence, I would go to my hotel afterwards and call my wife and say, I have been in the presence of a great man. You know, I would have loved to have been able to, to sit down and talk with him for 15 minutes. You know, I didn't have that privilege, but I was in meetings. I was privileged to be in, in special meetings uh, where he addressed us and he talked to us and, uh, in Washington. And uh, it, it was uh, something I'll never forget as long as I live. Amen. But I didn't get to talk to him. But you know what? I left his presence and I talked to the creator of the universe immediately. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I think that's a little higher than president. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I think that's a position that would be uh, considered a little Sir, higher than yes, president yes. of the United States. I talk yes, to that individual every day, yes. Yes, throughout the day. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. 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 And he's interested in what I have to say, and he's interested in my needs, and he's interested in fulfilling them if I will just stay in faith. Can you say amen? amen. Give the Lord a shout if you believe that today. Oh, Praise God. Lord. Amen. So once again, think of prayer as a wonderful opportunity to communicate with the creator of the universe. And never forget this. God is for you, not against you. God is not trying to keep you from having your prayers answered. A lot of people think, well, he didn't answer my prayer because he's trying to humble me. Well, humility actually is something you do yourself. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says if a man will humble himself, yeah. God's not trying to humble you. That's something you do yourself. Well, the reason God didn't answer my prayers is because he's trying to teach me something. My Bible says from the words of Jesus himself that when our prayers are fulfilled, God is glorified. Yes. Yes. Amen. God is glorified. Yes. Uh, let go of all the religious tradition. You know, turn that off. If you want to build and develop an accurate prayer life, you're going to have to unlearn some things. You're going to have to forget some religious tradition, you know, and, you know, I can remember uh, when I was a little boy and going to the little country church down at the end of our street, and they were wonderful people. There's no question they loved God. But when I think back on some of the prayers, I heard them pray, you know, and usually every prayer I ever heard them pray, regardless of what it was, before they said amen, which to them meant the end, there was this phrase, if it be thy will. Yeah. Folks, that's what this book is. Yeah. That's what it's for. That's why men shed their blood to get this into our hands. Yeah. Amen. God went to great lengths to get this book into our hands. Why? Because the word of God is the will of God. Yeah. If you read the book, then you don't have to pray if it be thy will. Now, there is one particular kind of prayer that we'll talk about later where it is appropriate to add that phrase, if it be thy will. But I'm not going to tell you what that one is right now. You have to watch every broadcast to find out which one it is. It is there is a type of prayer in the Bible where it is appropriate to say, if it be thy will. But it's not the prayer of petition. 
I'll just let you in on that right now. It's not the prayer of petition. The reason being is because the prayer of petition, if it's going to be prayed correctly and accurately, you have to know the will of God up front before you ever pray this prayer. Amen. So we'll get into that in great length. Now, let's remember this, that God is for us. Say it with me. God is for me. God is not against me. And then 1 Peter 3, 12. I love this verse. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. Hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Now, the next thought I had the first time I read that verse, you know, 45 years ago, I thought, wow, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. Boy, if I could ever get to become righteous, wow, my prayers would be answered. Well, let me help you out. You already are the righteousness of God. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 21, for he who knew no sin, speaking of Jesus, was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. Amen. Righteousness is not something you earn or strive for. Righteousness is a free gift from God, and you receive it the moment you make Jesus Lord of your life. When that became a revelation to me, and I read 1 Peter 3, 12 again, I said, man, God's eyes are over Jerry Savell, and his ears are open unto Jerry Savell's prayers. I went in there running to my wife, and I said, Carolyn, praise God. God hears our prayers, and from this day forward, we'll never be defeated again. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the way that struck me, praise God. If God's eyes are over me, because He's made me righteous, it's not something I earned, it's not something I did, it's all because of what Jesus did. Paul says in Romans 3 that righteousness is a free gift. We receive it by faith. Amen. And when you understand that you're the righteousness of God, then you have this confidence that God's eyes are over you. And you also have this confidence, His ears are open to your prayers. Yes. Just think, how many prayers do you suppose our Heavenly Father hears in one 24-hour period from people all over the world? But not one time as I approached the throne and said, Father, and He says, uh, excuse me, I'm dealing with Rick here. <laughs> You know, not one time. Uh, Father in the, excuse me, would you please take a number? Get in line like you do at the social security line or the driver's license place or something. No, not one time. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and in every being in heaven stands at attention. Hallelujah. And God is open to my prayer. What a privilege. See, that changes the way you think about prayer. Amen. Well, we're going to continue talking about this. My time is up, but I want you to watch your special announcement, and I'll be right back with some closing remarks. Amen. When you pray, you want answers. Addiction, abuse, poverty, and spiritual bondage are running rampant through families, churches, cities, and nations. What can you do to battle against the forces that seek the destruction of your family and community? You can pray. Learn to pray effectively in a way that sees results and humbly aligning with God's will. In Prayer of Petition, Jerry Savelle guides you to discover the prayer that gets results. You will study petitioning prayer in God's Word and read testimonies of modern day miracles ushered in by this powerful prayer. More importantly, you'll learn the biblical definitions of petition and supplication. Call now or visit jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of Prayer of Petition. Act now and receive a bonus, the companion Prayer of Petition Workbook and Study Guide. Don't wait. Request today. Learn the biblical way to petition the Lord and see miraculous answers to your prayers. Thank you once again for joining me today. I've had a great time. I've enjoyed sharing with you, and I trust that this has built some confidence in you where your prayer life is concerned. Now, we're just getting started. We're going to be talking about this for several weeks. In fact, it may take me months to cover all this, which I don't mind at all because I love talking about prayer. 
You know, prayer is fun when you know how to get results. Amen. So we're going to be teaching you that because I want you to have the same testimony I have, and that is God has never disappointed me. And you can have that testimony if you learn how to follow the, the uh, application that God's Word gives us for accurate prayer. Now, once again, our special offer this week, my book entitled The Prayer of Petition. Now, if you can't wait to hear all of these broadcasts. I mean, we've got a lot of material to cover. If you can't wait to hear it all, then get the book right away. You'll be ahead of us. You can read about all of this in this book, The Prayer of Petition. I'm telling you, this book has been sent around the world. Everywhere I go, I have people come up to me saying, Brother Jerry, your book and your curriculum on the prayer petition has changed my prayer life. It's one of our best-selling books, and I want to encourage you to get it, and so you can learn to develop this accurate prayer life, and particularly learn how to pray the prayer petition. Once again, I discovered a long time ago, it seems to be the kind of prayer that produces the quickest results in the most impossible-looking situation. So, the ordering information is on your screen. You can either write our office, you can go on our website, you can call and uh, order this book. We'll get it to you by return mail just as soon as we possibly can. And then also, I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. There's a lot of great things happening in the ministry. Uh, this is one of the ways that we can minister to you on a daily basis. You don't have to wait to watch the broadcast whenever it comes on weekly. You can follow us each and every day. Once again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I know that you'll enjoy all the things that you will find on those resources. So, once again, order the book, The Prayer Petition, and please make your plans to join with us next week as we continue this study. Now, I know that there are many of you that are watching that are facing impossible-looking situations right now, so I want to pray over you. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift our television viewing audience up all over the world. I pray in their behalf. Father, I know it is your will, based on the authority of your word, to supply their every need. I pray that the confidence from knowing that will rise up on the inside of them, and they will receive it, and they will declare it, they will decree it, they'll hold fast to it, and not give up. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us. And once again, I want to encourage you to follow all of the, the resources that we have available to minister to you on a daily basis. Thank you, partners, for believing in the ministry, for supporting the ministry. We appreciate each and every gift that you send and showing us that you believe in what we're doing here. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you again next week.